Incantations are so much cooler than spells, guys, yet cool teachers like the Pope Turtle and the Beast Clergyman, they have cool names, giant flame, take thee, and just super cool effects overall. Whereas us mages get bubbles, just bubbles, that's it. Anyway, here is the 10 best incantations for end game players. Let's go. We're going to start out with Rotten Breath, something that we all strive to avoid. But in Elden Ring, it's actually a positive because you can spew Scarlet Rot over all of your enemies. This ability has a really decent AoE effect in front of you. You can actually hold it down to keep breathing out this effect as long as you have FP to keep casting it. Applying Scarlet Rot very quickly on enemies, especially bosses, is always a valuable thing. There are some bosses that you can't apply Scarlet Rot to, or you can, but it takes a long time because they're resistances. But essentially, if you can get this off and apply this to enemies, it is actually a brilliant skill to have just keep casting it especially on packs of enemies too you can clear a lot of enemies with it it's a really good setup attack to use at the start of the fight you apply the scarlet rot you get that tick damage that applies once the scarlet rot effect is active so you don't necessarily have to keep using it then though you can because it does do physical damage as well as the scarlet rot so you can keep applying damage plus the scarlet rot effect but there are other ways that you can do that but it's just valuable to have as a damage over time effect to put on enemies very quickly apply it while still doing decent damage it's a great thing to use and this comes from the Dragon Communion Altar at the Cathedral of Dragon Communion for one Dragon Heart. Next is the Palisidus. Pal Pal That's okay, take your time. Palisidus Ruin. This incantation comes from Dragon Lord What's His Face, and essentially it is another dragon incantation that does a giant like beam of lightning and fire damage in front of you. And even though it kind of doesn't seem like you can aim it, it is actually possible to control where that beam goes. It's very hard to do so. Like I've never been able to get it like perfectly in one spot, but you can really control where that wave goes. And this does heaps of damage and it also does a really high amount of stagger, which I found very surprising. So you can stagger enemies with this and break their stance very quickly just by hitting them. Often you can just sweep through them once or twice and you can actually stagger and break the enemy's stance with them. It's it's very good in that in that regard. It's also one of the only incantations or spells in general really that you can cast while jumping, which is really unique. So essentially what you can do is like jump off a ledge or onto some weird angle and then cast this. So you can hit the enemy and they can't hit you, especially if they're just like really small or using some kind of ground attacks. It's a lot of value in that ability just to be able to jump and cast this. You also look like a complete badass when you do jump and cast this as well so there's a lot of value in that as well and this comes from trading the remembrance of the dragon lord with Enya at the round table hold next is a couple of buffs so we'll go through these pretty quickly because everyone has really heard about these first is flame grant me strength it's mostly self-explanatory essentially this just raises your physical and fire affinity attack power it's just brilliant to use in practically any build to raise your physical and fire damage physical and fire damage are like one of the two primary damage types in the game that you can buff and that are used by tons of builds so this is brilliant to like buff any physical or fire damage or even physical and fire weapons as well it's just plenty of value here and this comes from fort gale on a body between some of the vine flowers down there there's also flame cleanse me which is just a special shout out because i really like flame cleanse me it alleviates the build up of poison and scarlet rot it makes the lake of rot so much easier it only needs 12 faith as well so you can get this super easy without even investing in faith you can just use this by applying a couple of talismans to increase your faith to be able to pop this bad boy and you get this at the fire monk camp southeast of the church of vows next is the golden vow which is the last buff that we're going to talk about and this increases your attack and defense for yourself and your allies it is stackable with flame grant me strength that just gives you a straight attack power and defense buff that is just brilliant to use in a lot of fights and if you are playing any kind of faith build or incantation build having flame grant me strength and golden vow just on your bar to cast before you enter into boss arenas is just brilliant to have this comes from this corpse stench shack in mount gilmore now moving on to some more interesting spells we're going to talk about my favorite beast club clergyman now and this one's a little bit of a one or two like optional so you could go the bestial sling or the stone of garak i like both of these and they're both really valuable to have in incantations as a whole there isn't a whole lot of physical damage options and both of these or all of the bestial incantations really are physical damage that you can do and the bestial sling just slings like sand in your enemy's eyes it deals a decent amount of damage it's cheap it's super spammable it has a really quick cast time same for the stone of garak it's essentially the same thing in terms of it just throws a rock and it has a really quick cast time but it's a little bit more damage it's a little bit more stagger so you can often just stagger lock enemies where they're just kind of bouncing off as the rocks are hitting them because of how fast it does actually cast and both of these come from the bestial sanctum with garak the clergyman by giving him death roots i really like the bestial spells in general so any way that i can talk about my favorite clergyman then i'm absolutely happy to do so next we have the giant's flame 
Take the Air. And this is a fire spell that hurls a massive ball of raging fire at the enemy. This spell does knockback. You can also charge it up to deal extra damage as well as having a larger explosion radius. It does really good damage. Now, we've already talked about Flame Goat and Stank, and you can buff your fire damage with that. There are other ways to buff your fire damage with talismans and other things as well. A lot of enemies are not necessarily resistant to fire damage, but not weak to them either. So you can often get away with just spamming fire damage on anything that isn't like glowing red with fire. So it's really good to have fire options like this in your build and it's a fantastic spell to use that you can get some decent AoE as well as some really solid damage off in a lot of encounters. There are plenty of other really good fire options as well. So if you wanted to make just like a fire monk build and just use fire spells, then you absolutely can because there's so many good options. And I wasn't really sure exactly which one I was going to put on this list. I knew one was going to go on it and I went with Giant's Flame Take because it's a little different to some of the other options. This comes from the Giant's Prayer Book, which you will have to locate in the mountaintops of Giants at the Guardian's Garrison. Once you've got this, you can hand it off to the Pope Turtle and you'll be able to learn this spell. Next is Swarm of Flies. Now this was nerfed in patch 104, but it's still really valuable. It's just not broken essentially. So what this does is when you cast it, these slow moving flies will move towards a the target. They are heat seeking or like, I don't know, target seeking, whatever you want to call it. They will go towards the target and eventually get there. Then they will like explode and deal blood loss damage to them. They also deal other damage. I think it's physical as well. So you can cast this while moving or crouching. It's got a weird interaction with being able to keep moving and casting it. Because it's slow moving, they're not going to dodge it, especially large enemies. You're going to smack large enemies with this very easily. And you can use this attack and then follow up with like some kind of like blood loss weapon to increase that blood loss effect and deal damage over time in that way. There's plenty of valuable to using this spell. It has a quick cast time and you can just keep spamming them out and dealing damage is great on these larger kind of bosses. Swarm of Flies comes from near the Palace Approach Road side of Grace in Mogwin's area of the map. It's found on a corpse along the east wall down there. Next is Black Blade, which is probably one of the best incantations in the game, hands down, I would say, because of its effects. And essentially what this is, is a big spinning blade that comes from Malakath. It's kind of mirrors one of his attacks that he has. You do this big spinning slash that then follows up with like another slash that has like a wave off the effect. And it does heaps of damage on its own, but it also reduces the enemy's max HP by like 10%. So essentially you're reducing their max HP and dealing heaps of damage with this effect. It's almost like his swords, uh, Ash of War, that has very similar effects to this, but this is an incantation. So you can pop this at like the start of a fight or even just use it holistically in a fight because of the amount of damage it does, but it will allow you to reduce their health and then make that fight just a little bit easier for you. It does holy damage as well, which is pretty cool. So you can buff your holy damage in some other ways to increase the damage that this attack does. Lastly, we're going to talk about Elden Stars. I really struggled with this last option. I think considered doing something like Pest Threads or something else, but I kind of like Elden Stars for what it is. Now, essentially this is similar to Swarm of Flies in that it's like a set and forget you just cast it and then can kind of ignore it. It is a slow moving gold ball that will cast little smaller gold projectiles off it that will heat seek towards the target. So you can cast this, you can set and forget it and then use other abilities, other incantations or just generally attack and it will just deal consistent damage to the target. It doesn't deal heaps of just straight up initial damage, but it's really good because it will consistently damage them regardless of what you're doing. So say if you're stuck in a fight where you've got to dodge heaps, you can cast this and just keep that pressure up on the target. It's also good for PvP in that same regard. I'm not much of a PvP, but I see people use this in PvP. And essentially it just allows you to deal damage. And once it does explode, the little gold ball, that will also deal damage. It's real valuable in that regard, but you find this in the deep root deaths near the Great Waterfall Crest Grace site, and it's also near the giant ants that are down there as well. Now there's plenty of other incantation options. So do let me know in the comments down below what your favorite incantations are, which ones you are using, because there are so many really cool incantations in this game. If you're looking for the spell version of this, check out my best endgame spells video, which I'll link here as well. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel. My name is Norza and I hope you have a great day.